In the aftermath of World War II, the race for engineering innovation intensified, and the need for efficient and powerful engines became paramount. Designers knew that should another conflict break out in the coming years, now more than ever, the country with superior technology would likely prevail. Napier, a British engineering firm with a storied history in aircraft engine design, was determined to lead the charge. What followed was the remarkable journey of the E-125 Nomad 1, a testament to the relentless pursuit of progress and ingenuity that characterized the post-war era. Drawing on Harry Ricardo's pioneering vision and Napier's vast experience, the E-125 Nomad 1 represents a groundbreaking moment in the development of aircraft engines. For those that don't know, Napier was a British engineering firm that started designing and manufacturing aircraft engines during World War I. In 1931, they began working on an experimental 24-cylinder diesel engine called the E-101. This engine laid the groundwork for future engines, including the famous Sabre engine line. In 1933, Napier acquired licenses to produce the Junkers Umo 204 and 205 aircraft engines. These German-designed engines, renamed Culverin and Cutlass, gave Napier valuable experience in developing high-powered, two-stroke diesel engines. Fast forward to 1944, when the British Ministry of Aircraft Production issued a specification for a 6,000-horsepower engine for large, long-range aircraft. Engine designer Harry Ricardo suggested combining a two-stroke diesel with a gas turbine would result in a powerful, compact, and efficient engine. Napier took Ricardo's advice and started working on the E-124. It was an H-24 diesel engine with a displacement of around 4,575 cubic inches. Unfortunately, due to the limited market potential, the project was halted in 1946. Though the E-124 project was abandoned, it laid the groundwork for creating the E-125 Nomad 1. Alright, let's dive deeper into the Nomad 1's unique design features. The engine's crankcase was made from a magnesium zirconium alloy, split vertically and held together by 28 bolts. Attached to each side of the crankcase were six-cylinder aluminum monoblanc banks. The engine also featured wet cylinder liners and individual aluminum cylinder heads. The Nomad 1 also featured a magnesium alloy propeller gear reduction housing at the front, with air inlets on each lower side. These inlets led to the compressor with an upper housing integrated into the bottom of the crankcase and a lower housing bolted on. Air entered the Nomad 1 through inlets on each side and flowed into a 10-stage, and some sources say 11-stage, axial flow compressor, which was the first stage of supercharging. The air then moved through a bifurcated duct, splitting along both sides of the engine, and led back to the supercharger. An air-to-water intercooler, though never installed, was planned to be positioned on both sides of the engine between the compressor and the supercharger. After passing through the engine-driven centrifugal supercharger, the air was ducted into two passageways for the left and right cylinder banks. At 95.5 psi, absolute, the air entered a compartment in each cylinder bank that interfaced with the intake ports of each cylinder. The Nomad 1 used a loop scavenged cylinder design, with intake ports around the cylinder liner wall uncovered by the piston. With an 8 to 1 compression ratio, the fuel was injected and ignited by the heat of compression as the piston moved. Exhaust ports positioned slightly lower in the cylinder wall were uncovered by the piston during its power stroke. Exhaust gases flowed from these ports into manifolds above and below the cylinder bank. These manifolds merged at the rear of the engine, where fuel could be injected and ignited for additional power during takeoff. The gases then flowed to an axial turbine at the engine's rear. The turbines were mounted to a tubular frame attached to the rear of the engine. Both turbines were mounted coaxially to the same shaft, which extended forward to power the compressor and propeller gear reduction housing. The front outer propeller rotated counterclockwise and was powered by the turbine, while the rear inner propeller rotated clockwise and was powered by the engine's crankshaft. The two propellers couldn't run independently of each other. The piston engine section was needed to power the rear propeller, and the engine's exhaust gases powered the turbine that drove the front propeller. The Nomad 1's compressor and turbine were derived from the Napier Nyad turboprop engine. The engine featured a six-throw crankshaft, fork and blade type connecting rods, and two-piece pistons with an austenzic stainless steel crown attached to a Y-alloy body. Oil flowed between the piston body and crown to help cool the engine. A camshaft below each cylinder bank drove three fuel injection dual pumps, providing fuel to two cylinders each. A spark plug below the injector in each cylinder helped start the engine, with the plugs fired by a magneto driven from the engine's rear. Despite its complexity, the Nomad 1 was designed for single lever operations in the cockpit. The engine had a 152mm bore, a 187mm stroke, and was 41 liters in displacement. It was rated at 3,080 horsepower at 2,050 RPM, weighing in at about 4,200 pounds. Ernest Chatterton led the team that designed the Nomad 1. The compressor and turbine sections were tested in 1948, and the prototype engine was completed in 1949, running for 860 hours on the test stand. 
Contra-rotating propellers were installed and the engine underwent another 270 hours of tests. In 1950, an Avro Lincoln bomber was modified to install the Nomad 1 in its nose. The Nomad Lincoln made its only public appearance at the Society of British Aircraft Constructors flying display at Farnborough in September of 1951. The Nomad 1 accumulated 120 hours of flight time in the Lincoln. However, the program was ended in September 1952 due to the engine's temperamental nature. As the Nomad 1 was being tested, an updated and simplified version, the Nomad 2, was designed. The new engine retained the 12-cylinder horizontally opposed layout with a turbine and compressor, but discarded the contra-rotating propellers and mechanically driven centrifugal supercharger. However, the crankcase was still made of a magnesium zirconium alloy. The improved axial flow compressor had a maximum pressure ratio of 8.25 to 1 and a maximum mass airflow of 13 pounds per second. The Nomad 2's loop scavenging system was enhanced over the Nomad 1, featuring a manifold mounted below each cylinder bank, guiding pressurized air into the cylinder banks through intake ports. The Napier Nomad 2 engine featured an exhaust manifold mounted below each cylinder bank to collect exhaust gases. These gases flowed back to a three-stage axial flow turbine at the rear of the engine. The turbine and compressor were mounted on a separate coaxially coupled shafts, with the turbine shaft also connected to the crankshaft via an infinitely variable speed fluid coupling. The fluid coupling drive set was positioned at the upper rear of the engine. The engine's cylinders had a compression ratio of 8 to 1, while air was fed into the cylinders at 89 psi, absolute for takeoff, creating an effective compression ratio of 27 to 1. Fuel was injected into the cylinder at 3,675 psi using six fuel injection pumps above each cylinder bank. The crankshaft drove the propeller shaft via four pinions in the reduction gear housing at the front of the engine. The exact gear reduction used in the test engines remains unknown, but a variety of reduction speeds were available. The crankshaft was supported by eight main bearings, with two I-beam connecting rods attached to each crank pin. To start the engine, two ignition coils and two distributors fired a spark plug in each cylinder. The engine was hung by two supports above the front cylinders and two supports above the rear casing. The Nomad 2 initially had a takeoff rating of 3,135 horsepower at 2,050 RPM. As development continued, water injection, increasing the takeoff rating to 3,570 horsepower at 2,000 RPM, was added. At full power, the turbine shaft turned at 18,200 RPM, which was 8.88 times the crankshaft's speed. The engine's maximum continuous rating was 2,488 horsepower at 1,900 RPM, and it had a specific fuel consumption of 0.345 pounds per horsepower per hour. The Nomad 2 was first run in December of 1952, accumulating 350 hours by mid-1954. Although the engine demonstrated excellent fuel economy and impressive power, it was overshadowed by the development of turboprops and turbojets. Eventually, the project was canceled in April 1955, and despite plans for the E-173 Nomad 3 with improved power output, a complete engine was never built. Today, a restored Nomad 1 engine is on display at the National Museum of Flight in Scotland. Two preserved Nomad 2 engines are on display, one at the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Central in Chantilly, Virginia, and the other at the Science Museum of Rotten, England. The Napier E-125 Nomad 1 is a perfect example of how bold ideas and creative thinking during the post-World War II era contributed to the evolution of engine design. Even though the Nomad project didn't make it to widespread use, the lessons and innovations from its development played a crucial role in shaping the future of aircraft engines. The Nomad combined a diesel engine with a gas turbine in a way that hadn't been seen before, emphasizing the importance of efficiency and power, as well as the ease of cockpit operation. It also paved the way for using advanced materials like magnesium zirconium alloys, which later became vital in the aviation industry. Plus, the Nomad story is a perfect example of how ambitious projects can push the limits of technology and inspire future generations. A lot of the design principles and techniques from the Nomad found their way into turbojet and turboprop engines that ended up revolutionizing aviation. When we look back at the E-125 Nomad 1, it's a fantastic reminder of the human spirit and our desire always to innovate and improve. Even though the project didn't achieve its ultimate goal, Preserved Nomad engines serve as a testament to the idea that sometimes the most influential advancements come from projects that dared to dream big.